Good evening guys, this is Zachary, or Zach, whatever you want to call me, with another entry of records. I can't believe I'm doing a third one in third day. I'm not letting up. <laughs> Even if I'm sick, I'm. that does not stop me. Even if I have a goddamn ear infection on my left ear, fucking with me, hurting my ass, like it's really hurting my ear really hard to listen to music at times i could barely listen to what i'm playing on the guitar yet that's not going to stop me from listening to records as as of today i was listening to some records and as of lately i've been listening to some records three records in particular of uh, three great artists songwriters bands you name it um terrific um records um I'm just gonna shut up and get right into it. Um, the first record is The Cramps, Bad Music for Bad People, under the label of IRS. IRS meaning International Record Syndicate. Um, very great label, um, REM was on the label and they have some cool compilation albums. Um, if you wanna know more about those compilation albums, I suggest you go on Pop Culture Graveyard. <coughs> and look at some of the compilation albums that Hollis suggests because there's some great um, songs and very unknown bands on those compilation albums that and because of that it enlightened me you know to listen to that kind of music different kind of music different kinds of like labels and what compilation albums can really you know contribute into the world of music listening and record um, collecting I do not have any compilation albums, but what I do have is this album. And this album is The Money right here. It's a great fucking cramps album. Very succinct. The coolest goddamn front cover and a cool goddamn back cover. Um, the artists of this, both are on um, both um, covers, is Stefan Beckenstaff. I believe that's how you say it. Blickenstaff. There we go. Um... <clears throat> What's so great about this album? It, yeah, like I said, it's a thing. I have another Cramps album that has more songs than this. It's more like a bootleg or demo. But yet this on um, this album, I prefer to listen to it more just because of how direct it is on side A and side B. It does not let up. It does not add more. It does not add less. It's just right, you know, happy medium. Um, we got side one. We've got songs like Garbage Man. Um, <clears throat> great freaking song. I love the song. Um, I love how simple it is with the um, rockabilly influences. Um, they got songs like New Kind of Kick, which is a hilarious song, rocking ass song. It's about him trying to look for any kind of drug or any kind of way that he can get a buzz. It's hilarious. You should listen to the lyrics. I Can't Hardly Stand It. You Can't Go Wrong With I Can't Hardly Stand It. Instant classic by... Um, by the cramps um she said another one of those rockabilly covers that they did that's really weird but it's hilarious and fun and you can't go wrong human fly you can never forget about human fly human fly is a standard by the cramps if you love the cramps you know human fly um google muck and uranium rock and tv set right there is already great like like seven great songs and i haven't even mentioned the other songs i'm just gonna let you i'm gonna have you be surprised by the other songs in this album the second album joy division what i love about this album sorry this is the front it's just how much it captures the raw energy of live joy division we know studio joy division better than our own personality and better than our own families um what's so great about studio joy division you know of course the overproduced martin hannett production which is a treat for our ears which is very important in the revolution of punk and art punk and the whole movement of ambience and and goth music which you know <clears throat> rippled that like, little ripple effect of um created bands like the cure or you know created bands like Susie and the banshees and pylon um and maybe even a little bit of Bauhaus and stuff like that and and a bunch of other bands that i'm blanking on right now but i kind of said the tone already so we already know what those 
studio album studio albums that we can find on streaming services can lend to our ears but what this uh, what they don't lend to our ears is the visceral rock and roll energy that joy division always put down and always fucking delivered in the rock and roll shows in those concerts that i i wish i would have been but i wasn't alive because i was born in 1998 18 years later from this fucking live concert <laughs> Um, you could really hear Ian Curtis going bananas, some Iggy Pop vibes in in his voice and in his delivery, um, in songs like um, in transmission and songs like um, digital, and and you also have obviously the very ha ominous haunting songs like Passover from Closer, or Colony, or She's Lost Control, and such things like or Heart and Soul. So you. You got a little bit of like closer songs from closer songs from unknown pleasure and songs from the earlier stuff that are really great stuff to listen to. Really, you can really see their their the footprint, the blueprint of Joy Division and how they expanded from that first rudimentary rock and punk rock to the <laughs> my cat to the well known artsy and very pivotal sound that they constructed with Martin Hanney. Um, in the back is great little photo of the, um, them. You got Eden Curtis doing his little dance. You got Peter Hook laying down the damn bass, great groovy basses that you, you want to learn right away. You got Bernard Summers laying down the texture and the color, um, just like a statue, but an important statue, standing idle, but not just idly waiting and twiddling his thumbs. He's instead twiddling those guitar strings and creating such terrific sounds. And then you also have Stephen Morris in the back right here, just fucking hammering away on the drums. Like he should be. Great rhythm section from between Peter Hook and Stephen Morris. Um, you can't go wrong with a rhythm session like that. If you had a rhythm session like that in your band, do not let them go. And then we got the last album, great album, terrific album, as a matter of fact. It was a gift from my brother Iggy Pop and David Bowie, 1977. I believe this was the idiot time. Fucking crazy-ass album. When I tell you this works, it works. Freaking David Bowie's harmonies over Iggy Pop's singing. Um, you have freaking great guitar work. You have very groovy sounds with the rock and roll spirit of, of Iggy Pop. It's a great, fun album. It's... You, you will have so much fun listening to the song No Fun and Fun Time. You will have so much, so much more, just so much more thrill when you listen to Search and Destroy or I Want to Be Your Dog or, or TVI or even Raw Power. Raw Power kicks off the album with so much energy and so much thrill and you're just wanting more and then it just keeps on delivering, delivering until the end, until you're exhausted and you want to listen to it again because fuck it. And also, what's so great about this goddamn album is that it's red as hell. Look at this. It's the craziest color album. I, this is not the first color album I have. Uh, the Cramps record is a color album. I believe the, the my Germs record is color too. Um, but this is the first red one. This is crazy. I love this. Really great presentation. You can't go wrong with color albums. They really add a kick to your new kind of kick. You're always looking for a buzz. You get a color album. That's what I'm talking about. This is a record. Go-to record. Very quick and easy. Quick and dirty. I hope you guys enjoy. Have a great evening.